Hey guys, my name is Daniel, or some call me Doom Danny. I've been playing Lucky Chloe for two years now, and I was inspired by other YouTubers like The Blasted Salami and his premier editing style to make my own guide, specifically for Chloe players or even players looking for more information on Lucky Chloe and Tekken 7. This is a guide to all things Lucky Chloe. If that's what you're looking for, you've come to the right place. Okay. I'm going to break this guide into several sections for your viewing convenience. Timestamps will be in the description for you to jump to each appropriate section if need be. Without further ado, let's jump right into this guide. I hope you guys enjoy and let me know if you have any questions or feedback in the comments. Lucky Chloe at her core is a very unique character to the Tekken franchise. Some have compared her to Ling because of her evasion small hicks box as well as back turn stance moves. Others have compared her to Eddie because of his dancing fighting style. In reality, Chloe has a very unique character design with unique flaws and strengths. Generally, she trades her fundamental tools for big damage combos and evasion. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! The neutral hop kick! The neutral hop kick! This all right, now let's talk about some of Lucky Chloe's pros and weaknesses. We'll start with the pros. You win. Strong poke game. With a really strong down forward one that is only minus one on block, her one, two, and four two strings really allow her to mix up her offense, including a wall bounce out of her poke strings being included in season three. Her poke game is without a doubt her strongest attribute. Great evasion. Tools like sidestep 4 and up 3 or up back 3 hop kicks are real game changers and proper usage of them can help keep a swinging opponent on their toes. The design of these moves allow Chloe to always stay in the fight. Ridiculous damage. Chloe has some of the highest damage output in the game. Even her normal combos do extreme amounts of damage, not to mention her famed Calyrol Spring Pick combo that can just about put the opponent in rage from full health in one combo. Lucky Chloe's damage is just something else. Now that we talked about Chloe's pros, let's talk about some of her weaknesses. Chloe's improved a lot since season 1, but she still has some glaring issues. Horrendous block and whiff punishment. Lucky Chloe unfortunately has some of the worst punishing tools in the game. We'll go over why later, but this is still a very glaring issue for the character. No great tools at a range. With the exception of a couple of moves, Lucky Chloe really struggles outside of the 0-1 to one range. With many of her tools whiffing unless you are close to the opponent, her down forward 4 and down back 3 are victims of this. Extremely unsafe and linear. Chloe is often recognized as a high risk, high reward character. With her up 3 hop kick being minus 15 and her linear back turn moves, going for her big options can leave you in a very bad scenario if your opponent knows how to react to her properly. Chloe also happens to be very weak to sidestep left. Now that we have a good idea about Chloe as a character, let's delve into one of her biggest strengths, her poke game. Chloe's poke game consists of a couple of core tools. The main tools that she will be using are as follows. Down forward 1. Chloe's down forward 1 is regarded as one of the best in the game due to its phenomenal range and only being minus 1 on block. Standing 4 Even though she lacks a magic 4, Chloe's 12 frame standing 4 has amazing range for a 12 frame mid, very useful for closing out rounds and establishing spacing with your opponent. Down 3 Chloe's down 3 is a very solid long range low that has a sneaky evasion property attached to it. Even though it's minus on hit, the pushback on hit and the space it creates allows for a while standing 3 to be inputted right after to evade or outspace some mids. This is very useful when your opponent's back is to the wall. Down 2 Down 2 is a very good poking tool for Chloe players looking to reset the neutral. With it being 0 on block, the scenarios afterwards are unlimited. It also gives a nice guaranteed back 1 on counter hit. Down back 4 and down back 4, 4. As a Chloe player, these two moves are my best friend. On paper, they don't seem great, but the high crushing, long range low, and its extension, down back 4-4, four, four, are very decent poking tools. Down back 4-4 four, four also allows you to transition into the extensions from Chloe's forward forward 4, allowing for some very interesting mind games. This is also called Scoot Stance. Alright, so this is where things get interesting. Let's talk about Chloe's infamous 1-2 and forward 2 with their respective extensions. Standing 1-2. This is Chloe's bread and butter, if you will, for establishing pressure and offense of any kind. Her 1-2 is incredible in part because it checks people ducking for jabs as it is a high mid string. Also, her ability to use the extensions from it allow for some deep conditioning of your opponent for zero range mind games. Forward 2. 
I like to think of this move as a longer range way to access Chloe's jab extensions. While much slower than Chloe's 1-2 at 17 frames, it does an amazing job at closing the distance at a 1-2 range from the opponent. It is a great tool to get in with, especially if you're not confident with your instant while running 3s. Alright, let's talk about these extensions. Like most extensions in the game, Chloe has an option to cover every option the opponent chooses. If the opponent chooses wrong, they could be in for a lot of hurt. One extension. This was one of the nicer buffs Chloe got in Season 3. This move is now an extremely strong, minus 11 on block, mid wall bounce. If you have an opponent that loves to duck and attempt to launch the 1 plus 2 extension, this is a fantastic way to keep them in check. 2 extension. Another strong mid extension that forces crouch for both Chloe and the opponent on hit. On counter hit, it also guarantees a wall standing 3 for a total of 44 damage. Be cautious however, the final hit of the string is extremely linear and many opponents choose to deal with all of her extensions by sidestepping left and blocking. 1 plus 2 extension. This is where you're going to get a ton of mileage out of your extensions with Chloe. This all high homing move is amazing for putting pressure on your opponent. If your opponent likes to press after a dry 1-2 jab with no extension, catch them off guard with this extension for a nice counter hit screw combo. Or if your opponent likes to step a lot, keep them in check with its homing properties. The icing on the cake for this move that is only minus 2 on block, allowing Chloe to do pretty much whatever she wants afterwards. One of my favorites is 1-2, one 1-2 one on block into sidestep 4. Be careful though, your opponent might try and commit to a duck and launch you for it. In a later video, I will go more into the mindset of applying this pressure and how to improve with Chloe's jabs in specific. There's a lot more to be discussed on this topic. Let's move on to talk about some of Chloe's more useful unique moves and counter hit tools. Please note that in this section, I won't name all of Chloe's unique moves. She has a good amount of them, and I encourage you to explore her move list and find unique uses for all of her moves to use her to her full potential. Back 4. This counter hit launcher is Chloe's main way of forcing her opponent to respect her advantage. While it is somewhat slow at I-17, it makes up for it by being a safe mid. This is a great way of checking the opponent after some moves on hit, or even while running 3 on block. Sidestep 4. This is my favorite counter hit launching tool that Chloe has hands down. It has a lot of extremely evasive properties, and it keeps Chloe a threat at close range. It also has uses at range. You can annoy an opponent and bait the run in, or you can even whiff it intentionally to bait your opponent into falling for a Cali roll spring kick combo. Be warned though, this move forces back turn even on block, meaning that if your opponent blocks it, it's a guaranteed launch punish for them. Full crouch down forward 1. And another amazing way of putting pressure on your opponent is this low counter hit launcher. Being plus 4 on hit leaves you with a lot of options afterwards. Use injunction with full crouch down forward 2 and full crouch down forward 4 and her rage drive from crouch give yourself a nice little high risk full crouch game. Many strong opponents won't want to duck against Chloe. This move is a good way of manipulating your opponent to start ducking. Up 3 and up forward 3. Chloe's famed hop kick. This move is going to be a core part of learning to play Chloe. Key to stealing turns and evasion her hop kick is arguably one of the best in the game. This move has the ability to evade lows, highs, and even some mids. Its only downfall is being minus 15. If you're trying to avoid being launched for this move, I recommend you stick with the neutral hop kick up plus 3 in moments of uncertainty. It's much harder for a lot of the cast due to the pushback to punish. Be wary of matchups where the opponent has an easy launch punish for it. Forward forward 3. This move is a Swiss army knife of Chloe moves. It has great range, wall splats, and is hard to step if the player times the forward forward input well. On top of all this, it is an amazing knowledge check and information gathering tool. It is minus 6 on block, but the tremendous pushback allows you to easily whiff punish an opponent attempting to mash after it. Take note of what your opponent does after blocking this move and apply it to your approach. While running 3. Hands down one of Chloe's best moves. Think of it as a scuffed version of the infamous Dragon of while running 2 without the counter hit launcher. A huge part of the skill ceiling for Chloe is going to come from being able to consistently execute instant while running 3s in clutch scenarios and appropriate scenarios. This tool is extremely key to keeping in on your opponent and applying lots of pressure. It also has great okazemi potential depending on the way your opponent attempts to get up. Be careful though, a waiting opponent can easily time a move to float your while running 3 or sidestep it if you're too reckless. Back 1 plus 2. Chloe has two strong power crushes and this is one of them. Back 1 plus 2 is all highs, however it jails on block. It also happens to be a great homing move. 
Back 1 plus 2 also grants a wall splat, making it an extremely strong wall pressure tool covering most of the opponent's most common options to get off the wall. Be extremely cautious with overusing this move, however. If you get too predictable with it, it will surely end in your death. Down back 1. This is another extremely strong power crush. A good range on it too allows it to be even used as a whiff punish in some scenarios. One of the strongest wall bounds in the game at only minus 13 on block, the risk versus reward for going for this move is pretty well off in Chloe's favor in most matchups. Down forward 1 plus 2, Chloe's Command Grab. Chloe's Command Grab is an extremely unique grab in the game. It does zero damage and it's up to the Chloe player to decide which route to take after they successfully land the grab. The down forward 3-3 is guaranteed on all opponents except for Ling and Raven who unfortunately happen to have back turn parries. If you think your opponent doesn't know the matchup, I like to go of 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two into guaranteed back 1 once the opponent lands on the ground. Again, be wary of going with the jab option as a knowledgeable opponent can kill you for going for it. I generally like to keep it between these two options. Forward Forward 4 This move's sole purpose seems to be to keep Chloe in the fight at a mid range, and it does a pretty alright job at it. Notice on counter hit it leaves you at plus 12, allowing you to fish for a counter hit with the opponent's back to the wall. You can then confirm that counter hit into 2-2 two, two, just frame for a splat and a huge amount of damage. Alternatively, outside of the wall, this move is pretty easy to situational counter hit confirm for a full string of 4 forward 4, 3 plus 4 4 for a ton of damage. Although, be confident in the counter hit, otherwise the final hit of that string is minus 16 on block. 4 forward 4, 3 plus 4, also known as scoot 3 plus 4. This is the only move I felt was worth noting from her scoot stance mainly because it's a safe counter hit launcher that is only minus 3 on block, meaning that you can safely have access to a lot of options like sidestepping afterwards. This move can't hurt to throw out from time to time to keep your opponent in check. I don't feel a need to go in depth with her scoot stance, as this is really its main use outside of combos, maybe a later time. Let's move on to Chloe's beloved left twist stance. The moment everyone has been waiting for. You want to know how to dance on Lucky Chloe? Well let's begin. There are three ways to get into left twist stance. The viability of two of them depends on your opponent's defense and knowledge. For the purposes of the video, I'm going to leave out up forward 3 plus 4 3 as I find it to be a very bad and predictable gimmick. Down back 3. This is going to be your main way to get into left twist. A very short range low, but a very discreet animation keeps this move usable. 2 slide 3. This move is phenomenal if your opponent struggles to deal with it. Strong opponents will see this and low parry on reaction, but if your opponent isn't doing that, make sure to abuse this. Essentially, this is a much safer and faster way to get in a left twist if your opponent lacks the knowledge. Let's move on to discuss all the options out of left twist. Left twist 1. Chloe's one jab straight out of left twist, allowing for rapid and strong pressure. This is one of Chloe's best options for continued pressure after left twist. Left twist 2. Chloe's way to check for mashers after transitioning to left twist stance. This counter hit tool will earn you respect in this stance and will even trade with a down jab allowing you to still combo off of it. It does force back turn on use but it seems like the only a portion of a cast gets a good punish on it. If your opponent attempts to punish this move with jabs on block, forward 3 plus 4 from back turn will go under the jabs for a cali roll spring kick. Left twist forward 2. Chloe's forward 2 from left twist is a great way to throw your opponent off because of the back sway built into the move. Identical to Chloe's forward 2 from standing, this move allows you to use her jab string extensions. Left twist 3. A very slow move that can be hard to use but can give good plus frames on block. If you scare your opponent from mashing using left twist 2, sometimes they will let this whole move rock and you will get the free plus frames or they may panic and get hit by it for a full combo. Be careful and aware opponent can launch you for going for this. Left twist 4. One of the most commonly used moves out of Chloe's left twist stance is a quick low that comes out right away after left twist. Guaranteed if the original hit of left twist counter hits. Be careful not to overuse this move. Left twist down 4. Chloe's tool to get in the scoot stance from left twist. Very good in combination with scoot stance 3 plus 4. Left twist down back 4. Just frame. More to Chloe's mind games, a slow low that needs to be inputted with the rhythm of her dancing. Very viable to throw your opponent's timings off. Watch her feet cross to get a good idea of the timing to hit down back 4 for this move. This move is especially good for when your opponent's back is to the wall and they can't back dash out of it. Left twist back. A risky vine game to go right in the back turn from left twist. This is proven to catch even the most aware opponents off guard. You may have to be careful again, if the opponent is on point they could punish you for this. It's time to discuss Chloe's final stance, back turn.
The stance that gets Chloe all the hate, her ever evasive back turn stance. The damage output you can get from the stance is absolutely absurd. It's up to you as a player to find setups and ways to apply her Cali rule effectively. I think it's important for Chloe players to understand all the ways she can access back turn, so I'm going to list them all on the screen now. I encourage you to pause this part of the video and hit the lab and get comfortable with all these options. There's a lot that Chloe has access to in back turn, so I'm going to keep it to some basics and strong moves. Be cautious in back turn, she's extremely weak to sidestep left in the stance for the most part, even when just forward rolling. Back turn, down back or teehee step. Similar to Lay's haha -ha step, Chloe players can use back turn moves and more specifically back 3 plus 4 to rapidly make space. This is key to keeping your back turn moves unpredictable and changing up your timings as well as creating whiffs. Back turn, forward 3 plus 4, or forward roll. This is how you will move forward and back turn. It's important to note that you don't need to rush your timings with this unless your opponent is really blowing you up for sitting in back turn. Be patient with your forward rolls can sometimes make your opponent uneasy and yield the most reward. It crushes highs and evades some mids. Back turn, down 3. Chloe's generic low from back turn is one of her best offense stars in back turn. Being plus 3 on hit allows you to easily go for a wall standing 4 if your opponent is the mashing type to attempt a frame trap, or you could even go for a full crouch move from back turn down 3 on hit. This move is really annoying for the opponent, you might be able to get them to duck and eat a cali roll spring kick. Back turn forward 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, also known as cali roll spring kick. A famous evasive move that ruins the days of many fighting Chloe. Be careful when using this move, especially in some matchups more than others. It is an extremely linear move, and an aware opponent will be able to punish it well. Some characters also have option selects for it on block. Back turn 1 plus 2. Use back turn 1 plus 2 when you're trying to lock down your opponent from stepping your back turn stance. Be cautious, however, as the back turn version of 1 plus 2 is much slower than the standing version at 30 frames. Back turn 1. Back turn 1 is simply Chloe's generic jab from back turn. I thought it was worth mentioning here as a reminder that you could start your jab pressure right from a forward roll. This is useful for getting in and starting jab string offense. Back turn 4. Back turn 4 is a fast, low crushing move from back turn. This is a good move to note as a lot of people fighting Chloe will attempt to deal with her roll with lows of their own. Back turn 1 plus 3 or 2 plus 4, Chloe's generic grab from back turn. Chloe has the ability to generic grab right out of back turn. This is an amazing way to mix up your opponent's timings. Let's move on to Chloe's punishment game. Before I delve into Chloe's punishment game, I would like to spring the idea of frame advantage versus damage. Chloe is a character that is heavily rewarded for zero range pressure. Using this logic, there might be times where instead of using her I-12 punish, which essentially ends your turn, you might want to use her plus 7 on hit I-10 jabs to keep up consistent pressure. It's something to think about when playing Chloe in neutral as her I-12 damage isn't anything tremendous. Chloe's standing punishment is as follows. For I-12 punishment, Chloe also has access to a just frame version of 2-2. I found the best way to hit the just frame is just to practice delaying the second input as long as you can. She will say lucky if you hit it. The just frame version of her 2-2 will wall split and knock down. You can also get a guaranteed back 1 on the grounded opponent if they don't back roll. Lucky Chloe's wall standing punishment is as follows. Chloe is very lucky, per se, to have a 14 frame wall standing launcher. Make sure you take advantage of it. Now that her punishment is out of the way, let's quickly go over her rage usage. One of my personal favorite things about Lucky Chloe is how unique her rage drive and rage art are. In Rage 3 plus 4, Chloe's rage art is very unique, not only because it's a low or because it crushes highs. The rage art has a rhythm game per se built into it. You can hit either kick button in time with her feet hitting the opponent to spell Lucky for more damage. Watch as I do it to get an idea of how it works. In Rage, down forward 3 plus 4, works in full crouch and back turn. Chloe's Rage Drive on paper doesn't sound great, but in reality, it is an amazing tool at keeping your opponent in check. The first hit will track pretty well to both sides, so I like to use it at the wall when my opponent wants to step. Being able to use her Rage Drive full crouch also allows you to bait your opponents into crouching with you. 
On block, you can hold back all the animation plays to put Chloe in back turn stance. However, this takes away your plus frames and leaves her at minus 4, so it can be very risky. One last note about her rage drive is that the first hit will actually crush highs if timed correctly. It's kind of hard to pull off consistently, but it's definitely viable in the tournament setting. Let's move on to our final section, the bread and butter combos. If you struggle with execution like I do, you've picked the right character to play. Lucky Chloe's combos are extremely easy for the most part, and they were made even easier in Season 3. In my opinion, Chloe mains bread and butters do a great amount of damage and wall carry, so there isn't much need to get fancy. I'll run down the launchers and the combos that follow them. Before we get into these combos, I know a lot of people struggle with her down forward 2, 4, 3, 1 screw. So I'm going to teach you a trick for this by binding a 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 button in the controls. When I use down forward 2, I can then mash the button I bound to complete the move. Watch my hand. Alternatively, if you want to do it the default way, follow this rhythm. Between most of these combos, you'll notice that you'll have an ender option for wall carry and wall splat, forward 2, 1 plus 2, or an open screen ender, 4 forward 4, 3 plus 4, 4, for max damage. Use your best judgment on which other is worth going for. Her main combo, used most commonly in all of these launchers, is as follows. The damage based combo is as follows. Launcher, down forward 3, down forward 2, 4, 3, 1, screw, forward forward 4, 3 plus 4, 4. For a more wall carry based combo, you would do as follows. Launcher, down forward 3, down forward 2, 4, 3, 1, screw, forward 2, 1 plus 2. For counter hit sidestep 4, counter hit left twist 2, and counter hit back turn 2, your combo is as follows. Launcher, back turn forward 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, down forward 3, 3, screw, and then your following enders. For Kelly Roll Spring Kick, the combo is as follows. Launcher, down forward 2, 4, 3, 1, screw, and then your respective ender. For full crouch down forward 4 and counter hit back 4, the combo is as follows. Back 3 plus 4 to go into manual back turn. Back turn forward 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4. Down forward 3, 3. Screw. Forward forward 4, 3 plus 4. Or you could swap it out with the forward 2, 1 plus 2 ender for wall carry. For bears, you want to use her hop kick combo with a dash up at the beginning. So you'll do the launcher. Then you'll dash up, down forward 3, down forward 2, 4, 3, 1, and then your ender. Forward forward 3 plus 4, or forward 2, 1 plus 2. For counter hit, down forward 4. This combo will depend on the spacing between you and your opponent if it lands. There really is no harm for going if it forward though. The combo is as follows. Launcher, down 4, while standing 4, back 3, back for the screw. Back turn forward 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, back 1. For counter hit 1 plus 2, counter hit forward 2, 1 plus 2, and counter hit 1, 2, 1 plus 2, the combo is a bit unique for what I like to go for. It, this combo, however, will drop off access. The combo is as follows. Forward forward 4, 3 plus 4, down forward 1, forward 2, 1 plus 2. This is a great combination of wall carry and damage. If you believe your combo is going to drop because it's off axis, just do your standard combo ender in forward 2, 1 plus 2, or forward forward 4, 3 plus 4, 4. Chloe's Rage Drive on hit has two options. First, you are able to mash 1 plus 2 out for a single hit combo that does 74 damage. This is really best used if you hit the Rage Drive in an awkward situation or you are close to the wall. Keep note of your opponent's health bar. Don't force yourself to do the manual combo if you can just hit 1 plus 2 to win the round. The rule of thumb I use is, if it hits and your opponent is put in a rage, 1 plus 2 will always kill. Your second option for rage drive is to do a manual combo by holding back as the rage drive hits. 
This combo will do more damage and have more wall carry. Rage Drive back turn cancel combo is as follows. Rage Drive, hold back, then hit 1 to cancel your back turn. Down forward 2, 4, 3, 1, screw, and then your respective ender. Last but not least, let's talk about her wall combo game. Her basic ender for wall splat is as follows. Splat, 1, down forward 1, 3, 4. Chloe has many options for wall bounce, but my favorite is bounce, back 3, hold back, back turn forward 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4. A quick side note about Chloe's wall splats is to keep your eyes open for a side splat that makes the opponent slowly fall off the wall sideways. If you are aware enough, you can step into the splat and get a full down forward 2, 4, 3, 1 combo most of the time. Lucky Chloe also has the ability to deal huge amounts of damage with a Cali Roll Spring Kick into an opponent who is splatted on the wall. I'm not going to go into detail about this topic because it's fairly advanced and just takes practice, but here are some visual examples of it being applied. Another tip is that on some stages, a round start hop kick into where bread and butter can easily allow for a manual back turn wall combo. Well that does it, that's my guide. I genuinely appreciate you guys taking the time to watch it and support me. This has been a big passion project of mine that I have poured at least 100 hours into editing, writing, and recording all of this. I plan on making more videos in the future if this one is well received and you guys want more. I want to thank a couple of people who really helped me put this video together. Keith B essentially helped me learn how to edit properly. I'm still pretty bad, but this would have been a train wreck without him. Follow him at Keith Beador on Twitter. Azure Bouquet. A Chloe Lab Monster and a reference for a lot of my Chloe related information. Follow him on Twitter at Azure Bouquet. Carl Function 2. He dedicated the time to do our wonderful thumbnail and he's a very talented editor and he does great work. Follow him on Twitch at twitch.tv slash function2. And last but not least, the Lucky Chloe Discord, a group of fine people that are willing to help with any questions and engage in discussions related to our favorite character. I'll put a link to join us in the description. That's all for me. If you want to keep up with me, my Twitter is at DoomDannyTV and my Twitch is in the description. I stream there from time to time and I'm always willing to answer any questions you may have regarding Chloe or Tekken as best as I can. And as always, you win.